service under the blood of Jesus. We humble ourselves before you. We repent for everything we've done in words, in thoughts, and in actions. Only one person, huh? So we ask, Lord, tonight that you would lead us and teach us. Give us a word, fresh manner. Nothing stale, God. Nothing from the soul, but from your spirit. Speak, God. Father, we want ears to hear. We want to hear and see where you will lead us and guide us. Cover me under your blood. Anoint my lips with a coal from the altar, God. Create in me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be. Only one person at the door. And you, Joey, you take a seat tonight. Amen. Let the other gentleman. Amen. Stay at the door tonight. It's so good to see this gentleman in the pink shirt, man. He's been coming. He think I ain't see him. Jay, Joey, shake his hand as you pass him. He think I ain't notice him. Let him know I see him Sunday. Tell him I see him sneaking in here. Oh, 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 these, oh, Joe, oh go find out who he is, Joey. I look at him because I can't see him from this far. I find out who he is, who invited him here, who he's sneaking in. Well, how you sneaking? Is he the popo? Is he the FBI? He be sneaking in our church, y'all. He think I ain't see him. I'm going to be glad to be here tonight, man. Clap your hand if you ask him if he's the popo. Is he the popo? Who is he? My brother, he say, hey, talk to me. You can talk to me. Is he the popo? He's a, oh, he's sneaking in here. Do I go pass it? Let's go see if I know him. Go see if I know him. You know, from the years dark. Yes, I'm calling you out. If I come to your church, you can call me out. Go check him out, Pastor. Go check out. Ask him for his credentials. Amen. Only teasing. Go with me tonight to Genesis chapter 4. Everybody, I'm glad you're here. Tell somebody I'm glad you're here. Where's the best place on the planet? Where's the best place on the planet? The church. That's right. Jump ministries. I like that one. Man shall not live by, but by every bird. Is that the GQ pastor that used to come by Elliot? The clean cut one used to be dressed all the time. Amen. Amen. And, and he used to a, he'd come into service and leave. Genesis chapter 4. If you're there, you can say amen. I, tonight, y'all, let me tell you how you can know when I'm going to preach. How many of you want to know the secret? Miss Carolyn, I'm so glad to see you. The secret is, and this gentleman too, that he's here tonight visiting. The secret is, listen to what I say on Sunday. Like, if not just what I'm going to preach, but you can tell NASA by the services what God is saying to us. One of the things I kept repeating, let me see if anybody's tuned in. What did I keep repeating on Sunday? Not just the word, but I kept repeating first and best. I kept repeating first and best. So whenever you hear a sermon, listen to what the Lord emphasizes then you would know what is on the mind of God or what is on the heart of the spirit. Does that make sense? If you listen to what is being emphasized in the sermon, then you know what direction God is trying to take us. So don't do like, like you could already be ahead of the sermons. So a lot of times when I'm speaking, I already have my message for the next sermon because I can listen to what I'm saying to know what God is saying to us. Does that make sense? Don't say yes. Now tonight is what? Bible study. So in Bible study, you get to ask questions. So you don't have to just say amen and agree. You get to ask questions. And if I say something you don't agree with, I'm not going to be upset if you ask. If you don't, I've heard pastors say things all the time, and I don't understand what they're saying. And I leave questioning. But the, the opportunity we have in jump is that if I say something you don't understand, you can ask questions to say, what did you mean by this? Or, or give me more scripture or more insight on what you're saying. That's how you grow. How many of you want to grow? So you grow by listening and by asking questions. Faith coming by what? And hearing by? But you got to hear truth. You can't just listen to me and say, oh, good preaching, good preaching. What you want to hear? Truth. You want to hear truth. Because when you hear truth, you're able to apply that truth. And then that's what gives you the ability to grow. Make sense? You should know the truth. And the truth, the truth will do what? So the truth. So you got to know the truth. Not just say, oh, I hear you, Bishop. But what Bishop is saying has to be truth. Has to be what? Because it's the truth that's going to set you free. Not me sounding good. Not me making you do backward flips. Not me sounding like, like it's kind of right. But it's the truth of the gospel. Somebody say, what is truth? 
what is truth is, faith, what it works is. So is that truth? Oh, y'all ain't sound sure. Is that truth? So it's that, that is the truth. Now, a lot of people don't know that truth. You believe it or not, a lot of people think that just they got to have faith. I believe that for many years. I grew up in church from 14, Joey, and I, knew, I thought that if you believe enough, but I never in my life, until I was in my early 20s, put faith and works together. And I was in church from 14. So you got to hear that. I never in my life, I was hearing, I thought if you believe long enough, if you believe, you believe, it would happen until I woke, until the Holy Spirit spoke to me one day and said, faith without works is dead. And that's when it came alive, when the Holy Spirit began to break it down. So I used to hear preachers preach all the time, faith, 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 believe and believe and believe and believe in all day, Sheila. But I never heard them come from the aspect of what you believe for, you got to put actions with. Does that make sense? So all my life I was coming to church, I used to fast. Like we're fasting tomorrow, three day fast, 21 day fast. I was used to fasting, but never put the aspect of the works with the faith. So you don't want to sit here tonight and just say, Bishop is preaching well. You want to think and ask questions. Make sense? Genesis 4. Let's begin reading from verse 1. I see this young man in the back too. In the, he, like, he came to learn tonight. Coming to church on Tuesday, you got to be serious. Amen. So I'm glad to see you. I don't know your name, but before you leave tonight, I'll know your name. And you're going to be glad you came. Tell some that boy, say, you're going to be glad you came. Yeah. Y'all telling me, tell somebody next to you, say, you're going to be glad you came. Yeah. Okay, Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading from verse 1. This is really where you grow, y'all. This is where you grow. People come to church on Sunday, it's good, Sheila. But this tonight is where you really grow, if you grab a hold of it. Ready to go? Let's ride. Genesis 1. Put that on the screen for me, Plumber, so they could, he, even, he got the cross on the screen. Put it on Genesis 1, man, so we could roll. Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading from verse 1. Are you there? It says, now Adam. Now who? Adam. Now Adam. New Eve. Now Adam knew Eve. Who knew Eve? Adam. Let's read. Oh, good. Y'all sound good. Now Adam knew Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain. Who she bore? Cain and said I have acquired a man from the Lord and she bore again this time his brother his what what was his brother's name y'all with me now Abel was a keeper of sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground everybody understand that when you hear tiller of the ground what comes to you very good he was a farmer very good Monica he was a farmer and the Bible says in the process of time it came to pass now when we read the Bible, the Bible is to teach us God's character. Again, and it's to teach us what God likes. When you go with somebody and, and, and if they order seafood or they don't order seafood or they say they don't like seafood, you get to know them. So one of the purpose of the Bible is for us to understand who God is, how God works, his mode of operation, what God likes, what God does not like. Does that make sense to anybody? So that's why we read scripture, to learn the mind of God. So you're not just reading a storybook, you're learning not just what God wants us to do, but you're learning about the God you serve. Does that make sense? Like you get to know someone, you learn their favorite colors. You learn to learn what their scents are, what they like to eat, where they like to go, what type of movies they like. Do they like drama? Do they like comedy? So you learn about the person. So the same thing with God. God did not just leave the word for us to say, to, 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 to grow from, but also to understand his character, his nature. Does that make sense? How he does things, what he likes and what he does not like. Does he like sin? That's you understanding the God that you serve. Let's go. That's a way of understanding him. The Bible says in verse 3, y'all could keep me on with verses I'm on. In verse 3 says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering. Are y'all with me? What verse am I on? He brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. So in just, just that small part, what do you notice about God? Take your time. He likes offering, that ain't you making it hard. Monica, come sit over here. You ain't in the back. Now I used to you being in the corner. It, one of the things you know about God is God likes what? What he likes? So he likes, so when you think of offering in the 21st century, what is offering to you? Y'all sound so spiritual. Okay, forget the spiritual part of it, so to speak. What is offering in the 21st century? I didn't say in church century. What does it sound like? Talk to me. Uh, very good. Sounds like a gift. 
So, very good. So what does God like? What does he like? So you learn that about his character. God likes gifts. Does anybody in here like gifts? That's a, God made us in his likeness and his image. So we learn about God that one thing that God likes is he likes gifts. Gifts can be, another word for gift could be what in the spiritual sense? Offering. Yo, boy, you're all so deep. You're all so deep. You all are so deep. I think I got the deepest church in the world. Another, you could tell me Miss Carolyn mine is, she didn't say tithes twice. Another word for gift is, somebody say offering. Say it again, say offering. So God likes gifts. In the, in, the, in the spiritual sense, we can think offering, correct? Okay, let's just we'll make sure we're on the same page. Don't let me put words in your mouth. The Bible says, and Cain brought an offering to the Lord or a gift. It says it was a fruit of the ground to the Lord. So what was Cain doing with his offering? He was bringing something of himself. He, what, was, he, was he a tiller of the ground? So he was bringing what was from the ground to the Lord, which it looks like, if you look at it, it seems like an acceptable offering. Correct? If, y'all, if I'm wrong, y'all, we could talk as a few of us, so we could rap. He brought it to the Lord. So that would also tell you he didn't bring money. So when I say that, that says you don't just have to bring an offering of money to God. Whoever said amen. You can bring an offering of your time. You can bring an offering of your talent. So there's more than one way to bring an offering to God. Do we agree? Yes. Okay, yo, now let's, let's go now. And the Bible says, and verse 4, am I in verse 4? Yes. Abel also brought, a, a brought of the firstborn of his flock. So of the firstborn, can we say that that was like the first, first fruit? Yes. Can we say that? Yes. So that means every time the sheep bear, the first sheep that come out, what he did? So we all agree with that. He gave it to God. So notice Cain's thinking and notice Abel's thinking. And what you got to see in this is bro- both brought offerings. Both. Now everybody in here is going to give. You can give in one way, shape, or form. And there's nothing wrong with giving. And the reason why there's nothing wrong with giving is because we understand God likes gifts. He accepts offering. Do we agree? We're going somewhere, but I got to set the stage for you to understand that offering is important to God because Cain and Abel, as we know, this is the first time that we talked about how Adam and Eve had children and then how these children brought offering. So you need to know that offering must be very important to God because this is only in Genesis 4. We're not in Genesis 45. So this is the beginning of an offering, an example of something being given to God. So that means that God is concerned about what we give to him. Do you all agree? Okay, let's go, Pastor Ellie, you, you with me. And the Bible says, what verse am I on? Four. And he brought of the first fruit of the, of, of, of the fat, and the Lord respected it and his offering. But he did not respect Cain. Is that what it says? It says, very good, Monica. But he did not respect Cain. But I'm going to read with you so you guys stay with me tonight. Because I'm putting this down now so you got to ride with me. And he did not respect Cain. The Bible says he was very wroth and his countenance fell. Who was very wroth? Cain was angry. Why was he angry? But God didn't receive his offering. Now, I've read this story a thousand times, maybe more than that. And I've asked myself, why would God be upset with Cain? And Cain brought up what he worked. So why would God be upset? Abel brought up what he did. And then Cain brought of what he did. Am I right? Let's go. Six. And the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? And why is thy countenance fallen? Why are you upset? Why are you angry? Why your countenance or your face or your attitude off? Because I accepted Abel and didn't accept yours. Is correct? So God now is asking him a, a question. And if you look at the scripture, it looks almost like it's unfair, like God has favorites. Because one he, ex- maybe it's just me. One he accepted, one he didn't. Let's go. Thank you, Ms. Calvin, for being here. Let's, let's look at seven. If thou hast done well, shall not thou be accepted? If thou doest well, shall not thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the now, again, when you think of a door, is he talking with the door of his house? Is he talking with the door of his car? 
What door is he talking about? The door of his heart. So, again, think. That also tells you God is not just concerned about what we give, but he's also looking at the posture of our heart when we give it. So your offering doesn't just have to do with what you give. It has to do with the motives of your heart when you give it. Say prove it. Because what he said to you, if thou, doest, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, then sin lie at the... And we all said in this room that the door represents what? So there was something that was inwardly wrong from Cain's gift that started from his heart. How many of you know we can give when we do things? We could do things with strings attached. Oh, y'all don't like me. We could do things with wrong motives. We could do things that say we could give so we can get back. And then when we don't get back, we get, we, we, we get upset because I did for this person. They didn't do for me. And then we start labeling what we give. How many of you that's wrong? Because when you give, you should not give expecting, even you should still want to give even if the person don't give back to you. But when you start giving with strings attached, your motives are wrong. Now remember, this is Bible study and we could ask questions. You only just got to say amen. Don't let no one intimidate you tonight. Leave here with an understanding. So that shows you God doesn't just look at what we give. He looks at the posture of our heart when we give it. Does that make sense? Are we, how many of you know you could give to be seen? Very right, because you could give us him, and I want other people to see what I give. Who did that? The scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites. They wanted to be seen. They wanted the people to notice this is what we do. This is how we do it. They wanted to get glory from men and not glory from God. Now we can take, we go on a little, we can go deep sea diving tonight because we can see some things. And if thou doest well, thou shalt not be, thou shalt not, shall not thou be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lied at the door. And unto thee shall it be his desire. And thou, sh and, and the Bible says, and thou shalt rule over him. And it shall, sin will rule over him. Do we agree with that? So let's go. Good. You're shaking your head. Go, go to verse 8 for me. And Cain, watch this. And Cain talked with Abel. His, so now we're about to see Cain's motive come to the surface. We can begin to see when Cain gave his offering, if you look from outside and be like, why did God accept Cain? And why did God uh, accept Abel and not accept Cain? Because now we can see why. Because God was not just looking at the offering. He was looking at Cain's heart the entire time. And let's begin to examine, examine Cain's heart. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field. When they were what? When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel. Now, you need to know this is his brother. This is not a stranger. This is not cursed. This is his brother. He rose up against Abel, his brother, and did what? He killed him. He murdered his brother over an offering. So that to tells you that it was all about Cain and not about God. Now, y'all don't just say amen. Say, prove it. If God, if Cain's heart was right and God had chastened him plumber or rebuked him, what should have Cain done? What Cain should have done? Cain should have repented, said, God, I did wrong. I messed up. And what God, and after he recognized what God had done, did he have a chance to go back and try and fix it? So he could have said, man, I messed up, but you know what? Now that I know and my senses are together and I see what my brother did, God forgive me, I was wrong. But that was not his heart. He went from worse. And why do you think, it sounds funny, but why do you think he went from worse to, 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 to murder? Because it was showing what that his offering from the very beginning was not right. Because if his offering of his heart was right, when he was checked, he would have corrected to do better. Which, of you, anybody in this room, which applies to a lot of us? Because rather than us recognize, you know, I was wrong, I was out of place, we try to justify it. And when we do that, we're showing where our hearts are. Rather than admitting, God, you know what, I was wrong. God, I blew it. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have made that call. I shouldn't have gone over to that house. I shouldn't have drank as much as I drank. I should have admitted that I did wrong. But rather than do it, we say, you know what, man, I'm going to just quit the job. I ain't going back. And that shows who we really are. 
Am I making sense, anybody? When we have an opportunity, he had an opportunity to fix it. And the demonstration how evil his heart was that he slew his own brother over an offering. Rather than going to God and saying to God, look here, after God told him. So when God came and said, why your countenance fell? He should have said, God, man, I messed up. Man, God, I did wrong and I repent of it. But rather than do it, he hid it in his heart. With his show, and I want you to see tonight, which with his showing that you can give an offering, but your heart is not right in your giving because you could give, and then when your light bill ain't paid or your 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 car note ain't paid, and you call the church, you know I've been giving to that church a long time. Now I need some help with my mortgage, and I tell you, ain't no money in the till. Be like, that's why I don't trust no church. And that gets personal. That's why I don't go to church. All that money I gave them. Oh, Lord, all the time, all my tithes I gave. I got an account of all my tithes, and I called the church one time, and they could not help me. Oh, I know I'm all over it. I ain't going back to that church no more because I didn't give all the painting I did. I fixed those chairs. Every time Bishop called me, I was always there for him. And then the test was taken. Then you get dead mad. Look how God failed you. You ain't going back to church no more because that was festering in your heart. You was giving to Bishop and not giving to God. Thank God for the one applause. Thank God. I, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I, re I see my one applause. You were given to be seen. You were given as a credit account. Some of the problem, you know, a lot of people go to church and they give and say, you know what? I got it. I'm going to give and one day I'm going to come back to try to get everything I gave. <laughs> and y'all sounds funny, but I've seen it. I've seen people keep, yeah, am I talking right, Pastor? I've seen people keep an account of what they give, and then when they fall short, and money sometimes is not there to give. But you gotta understand that if God, the test, somebody say, the test is always for me. That's real. <laughs> oh, this is tight. Y'all ain't gotta get mad at me. I know my mouth loud, right? But we could talk. The test is for you. God refused all the time. God refused Cain's, Cain's offering. But hear this, Cain brought him an offering. Why didn't God say, bruh, at least you try? Because you know that's what some of us say, Lord, I try and at least I'm trying, God. But even trying wasn't good enough. That you should be thinking, why wasn't trying good enough? Because the very offering, his heart was not right from the very offering. So some of us could try just to say we're doing our part, but our heart ain't in what we're doing. So good. And we wait for one thing to go wrong, to blow everything. When God is testing you, that was a time for Cain to repent. Rather than Cain repent, he committed murder. First murder in the Bible. Say, say Bishop. Bishop. And guess what the murder was over? Offering. How many of you know money will mess up the best set of friendships? Y'all ain't got to say nothing in here. Money will cause people to get mad with you. I lent you some money. I borrowed some money. You promised me you can pay me back, and you ain't never pay me back. Mad for days. Holding things on because of money. Because of what? Money. Because of what? Money. And it happens in church all the time. Where, uh oh, somebody say he's on it. Where people get angry. When the root is money, the Bible says the love of money. Say the love of money. Love is the root of what? All evil. All evil. Most people get divided and get offended over moolah. So they say, money, money, money. Marriages are divorced and separated because of money. I'm preaching right. Friendships are destroyed because of money. People don't want to be around each other because of money. People leave churches over because you value the money more than you value the relationship. That's somebody say, he's talking to you. Y'all uh, are telling me, I say, touch them, touch them, touch them. If they fall, come over here, come sit closer, Pastor Ellis. You're going to sit far from us. See, he's talking to you. Everything comes, but money, money separates friendships. Only Monica, let's go. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and Cain, thank you, brother, you don't go back, don't go back, stay there. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel? Watch Cain again. Now he's showing more of his heart. He said, where is Abel? Now, I got a question for everyone in this room. Y'all, please take your time and answer it. Did God know where Abel was? Yes. 
Y'all to y'all answer that a little fast. Did God know where Abel was? So could it be that God was giving Cain a, a Abel another chance, Cain another chance to repent? Say mercy. I'm just asking y'all, y'all answer that so y'all get mad and say, Bishop being teach, right? You taught it, not me. You said he had was his second chance. And the Lord said to Cain, again, keep in mind this is over offering. So it shows you that, watch this, God, he honors offering. What everybody in this room needs to hear, you got to get it in your spirit. God honors what I bring to him. God does not take it for granted. You got to understand, when I give in church, God doesn't take it for granted. When I put things in the envelope, God doesn't take it for granted. When I come to church and it cleans up the church or, or I paint or something is called, God doesn't take it for granted. It's an offering. It goes up before the Lord. Where God doesn't accept it is when I do it and my motives are off. Doing it to be seen. Doing it with strings attached. Doing it because I want somebody to notice me. Doing it because somebody else is there that I like. I mean, a lot of people may be attracted to someone and they know they can be there. Setting up your appointment divine appointment not the right this is the wrong church man so you more into the person than you are bringing an offering and then you wonder why can't you be blessed from the lord i'm seeing something in my spirit i have to do i like to do when you also me do illustrations is what i see in my spirit man so i have to do what i see what i have to do what so an offering is a sweet smell to the lord say prove it God accepted Abel's, but he did not accept Cain. One he refused and one he didn't refuse. So that means Abel's offering was sweet to the Lord. What it was? When you take the time to give God, which is very key. I hear the Lord saying this. The Lord said, also let them know what Abel gave me was his best. He didn't give him the second sheep. He gave him the very first sheep. So I got to understand also, what God requires from me is not just what I give, but it has to be my best. Oh, she's taking notes. I love it. God doesn't just require me giving, but it must be my, it must be my what? When you give something to somebody, you should never go and say, let me give them my used shoes. Let me give him the dress that is in the corner that's being there with holes. Because if you're bringing that shoes or your dress or your suit, you're not just bringing that to them, you're bringing that to the Lord. So you never give somebody something to wear or put on that you wouldn't wear or you wouldn't put on. You shouldn't give somebody something to eat that you wouldn't eat. Somebody say best. Because when I do it to them, I'm doing it unto the Lord. And what we see from Abel was, it was his very best. If you can cook for somebody, you shouldn't say, man, let me just slap this together. Let me just put this together. And here, I got to do it as if it's unto the Lord because it's an offering. You can't say, I'm giving somebody a ride, and the car's dirty, and you say, man, just come get a ride. Say, excuse my car. You got to make sure that the car is clean, because in taking care of them or dropping them off, it's doing your best. You can't give somebody something to stay in your house, and you just put them in the corner where all the roaches are. Somebody say, he's on it. And say, you sleep over there. Because as you treat them, you're treating the Lord. Somebody say best. Yes. So we see that there are offerings that God receives and there's offerings that he refuses. You think about it. There's offerings that, very good Monica, that he receives and there's offering that he receives. Not every offering that comes in the offering plate, God receives. That should scare you. That should make you think. Not every time I give an envelope and I think it's in there that God receives it because it is not my best every time God doesn't want it. He refuses it. Somebody say best. Again, you know, but God, if somebody brought you something, you wouldn't want them to bring you some food that was left over from last week until you eat. If somebody gave, let you take a shower, you wouldn't want them to let you take a shower with dirty towels to clean off, soap that was used, a tub that was never clean, you would want them to have the best. Am I talking right? So the same way you expect to be treated, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Simple, but it's so true because we don't give God our best. We give God our leftovers. 
And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, what he said? You all said that you all whispered something. He said, I know not. And then watch, watch this. Then he said, am I my brother's keeper? How many of you know out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it? He was angry with God. How do you know he was angry at God? Look at the way he responded. Let me tell you something. You ain't got to ask if somebody like you. Just watch how they respond to you. Hello? What? What in the name of Jesus? How you doing today? Am I right? Just watch the way people respond to you. And you know that they have something in their heart against you. Their attitude. Am I talking right? Their attitude, their actions, the way they look at you, the way that they respond. When he asks him, where's your brother? He say, am I my brother's keeper? Do I know where he is? He was angry at God because he kept something in his heart. So much in his heart so that it made him kill his brother. And so much in his heart so that he just gave God a flipping offering. The offering was with no consideration. Good preaching. The offering was no, with no care. It was that anything that's flippant is just for you. It's, so it's a, it was called a whatever offering. I'll just give it, I'll sing the way I want to sing, I'll dance the way I want to dance. One thing we must always remember that God requires is a spirit of excellence. Only one person heard that. One thing that God always requires is a spirit of excellence. I always watch with the young ladies when they dance, how their shoes are. I always watch how their hair is done. I watch not just how their hair is done, how their nails are. Because what God requires from each one of us, if you're going to do anything for me, it must be done with your best. When you see people dancing with shoes dirty, they hear any kind of way, that means they don't operate in the spirit of excellence. And they're doing it just to do it. They're not doing it unto the Lord. Even when we dress, come into the house of God, we should come with a spirit of excellence. Say, prove it. When you go on a date, you don't go any kind of way. I wish I had somebody real in here. When you go on a date, you make sure you smell good. When last have you been on a date and you were sweaty? When last you went on a date and making sure you didn't... You make sure your breath was on, am I talking right, man? You made sure your breath was on point. You made sure everything was on point. And you go in a day, every time we come in here, we come in the house of the Lord to meet the Lord. Am I talking right? Yes. Y'all didn't like me. It's an offering. And if you go on a date, you're taking the time. Most of us, even before you go on a date, if you know you have a date next week, you're already thinking what you can put on. You ain't thinking what color shoes you can wear, how you can get a, a good tape up, man. You can make sure your tape up is on point. Ladies, you can make sure your nails are your manicure. And when he look at these nails, they will not be chopped up. He's responded, am I my brother's keeper? All from an offering. An offering that's supposed to be to the Lord. God requires excellence. Say that. God requires Say it again. God requires Say it again. Not excellence just from the preacher. He requires excellence from you. And everything you do, and how many of you know that translate to promotion? Say prove it. Whenever somebody hires you on a job and they're thinking about promoting, they're looking for somebody who shows up on time, who stays extra hours, who works hard, who don't just do what is required, who goes the extra mile because they're looking for somebody to run their company or promote and will take care of their company as if it was their own. Same with God. God looks for the spirit of excellence. This is good stuff tonight. Huh? Because most times when we do things, we do things just to do it. Let me say this too. This is for anyone that's listening. Really hear this. There was a time that a pastor came to me when I was still in my blue house, really like buckling. And I had a blue house with white cockroaches and a young man had given me a certain amount of money. This pastor called me on the clear blue and he said to me, can I borrow close to $30,000? Can I do what? What he said? Borrow. borrow. Say money. money. My dear money, separate friends. He said, can I borrow close to 30000 I had the money, so I gave it. True story. Guess what, y'all? I never get the money back. Wait, wait. I get, never get the money back. There was a time, I want you to stay with me, that this pastor 
had to have surgery and had other needs. And they called me and they said, this pastor needs this, this pastor needs that. And I already knew, I had said to him, I had done so, given this money, and now they're calling me. I could have said now. When they told me that, I ran for the check to write it. The Lord showed me in a dream that he had a need and said to give it. I ran to give it again. Not just on one occasion, on more than one occasion. Why? Because when I gave it, I could have been bitter. I could have been angry. I could have said, what about all this money I lent you and you never gave it back? But I did it unto the Lord. So there was no strings attached. There were no grudges. And it, look at somebody said, wasn't no little bit of money. How many of you know a little bit of money you don't mind? I wish I had somebody real in here. But how many of you know when you get that kind of money that hurts? That's a whole, no, ex, listen, let me add to it. Especially when you ain't got it. So if you got it and you lose some, you'd be like, you know what, I'm all right. But when you ain't got it and you go in the extra mile, it's hard not to be able to get it back because you need your own money. Boy, I was, I was in my house with my cockroaches. I, did I need money? Yes, I did. But when I sold it, y'all, I sold it understanding that when I release it, and he said, I would give you back. I could give you, I could give you countless stories. You want some more? Let me give you some more. Another pastor called me. This was, this was, this is, this is truth. And they said, this, this, this gentleman who has a big company and he's helping churches. And this, these are not pastors. This is almost like how you may, may respect me. I'm respecting them. Anybody understand? Make sure you say that. So this is like me coming to you and saying there's a business deal. You think, Bishop saying it must be real. Because you respect me. Do you feel me? So the pastor coming to me, and he was my pastor for many years. He came to me, he said, I know this gentleman, they have money, and he says, if you give a certain amount of money, they can give you double your money. It was a business deal. So I'm thinking, I said, are you sure? What am I saying? Like you would say to me. I said, are you sure? They're like, yeah. They said, man, I will guarantee it. And this is like my pastor. So guess what I did? I gave it. Guess what? I never see it back. I never got double. And guess what? That pastor too called me afterwards and said I have needs and I still was able to bless him. Never held on to bitterness. Never got angry. And never said I would never give to them again. Now how many of you know I'm, I learned now? Now, now that ain't means for those of you who are so smart. If he called me and asked me for another twenty-five thousand dollars, because that's how much it was, and he said, "I know somebody that will double," I'd be like, "No, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, <laughs> y'all get it later." <laughs> I'll be like, "Bro, <laughs> I took that test before." Anybody understanding me? Yeah. So I won't be foolish enough to do the same thing again. So I learned, but that doesn't mean that I won't give to him if he has a need or the Holy Spirit lays it upon my heart to give. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah. So God wants us to be wise, but we still can't get so bitter and so angry. We say, I ain't giving to nobody no more because I remember what you did to me. Because when that, what that does is that hinders you from receiving what God has for you because now you become the giver and stop relying on God to be the giver. So, oh, whoever said amen. That means it becomes your, your money and it's no longer God's money. Does that make sense? So don't allow life to make you bitter and angry, but you hold on to your thing, to think because people portray you. How many of you know people take, God could still give? Clap your hand if you get that. Clap your hand if you get that. Clap your hand if you get that. Three, y'all. Keep going, plumber. Keep going, plumber. And he said, what hast thou done? He said, what you did, what has thou done? Good preaching. The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. What's crying? The blood is crying from the ground. Go plumber. It's crying from the ground. And now art thou cursed. Whoa. So that also show you. And I need your eyes. That also show you. When I don't do it correctly, I could curse myself. Oh, that's very deep. Unless I'm reading wrong. That also shows you that if I don't do it correctly, I could curse my finances. I think in witches and warlocks cursing me, but how many of you know you could curse yourself? Oh, 
Maybe you're, you're, you know, but only one person said, Amen. He said, And now art thou cursed from the earth, which thou, which, which thou had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood. So he's saying, Because you did what you did to your brother, you are cursing your own self. Can we flip it? That means if he had done right by his brother, he could also receive a blessing for doing it right. Let me say to you, know why my finances are covered under the blood? In Jesus, Lord. You know why my finances flow freely? It flows freely because I don't ever let the finances rule me. I never let it become a God to me. God is my provider, not the money. That's good preaching. God is the one who sustains me, open doors to bless me, not people. So when people don't do it, I can't get angry at people. I, even if I get angry, I got to take it to the Lord to keep my heart right. Uh, anybody, say, somebody say amen if you understand that. He allowed, what is, what he allowed it, his, his heart and his posture end up cursing himself. So that means poverty could be a curse to some people because of how they handle finances. Money could be slipping through your hands and coming and slipping through because of how I handle God's money. I can never be hold on to my finances, right? Because I've never really given my finances to God. It's still mine. Oh, that's food for thought. That's why the money may not be flowing to me. Because when it flows, it just flows to me. It don't flow through me. <laughs> oh, it's getting hot in here. So the money may best come to me, and I'm trying to build my kingdom. God never blesses you for you to be blessed. He blesses you to be a blessing. Y'all clapping. Let me give you some more. Not just to be a blessing with strings attached. So I shouldn't give to get. I'm giving so I can get back. I'm giving because I want you to give me it back. But you should give unto the Lord expecting to receive from the Lord, not from man. Because you, again, say prove it, Bishop. You can give with wrong motives. How do I know I give with wrong motives? Because when I did it and they never give me back, I cut them off. And then everybody in this room need to think about people you cut off over finances. Uh-oh. I'm going to say it again. Yo, yo, don't, I don't want you to write now. I need your eyeball. <laughs> I say everyone in this room needs to reflect in their lives the people you cut out of your life because of money. Who you loan money to, or who, listen, I know that I heard this, or who you ask for money and they didn't do it. And let me tell you when we really get mad. <laughs> you call them, they call you for money, and you lent it. And then the tables turn one day, and they had it, and you call them and they say no. How many of you know that could really make you mad? And then you know what we do? We hold that in our hearts. When I had it, I gave to them. And now I'm in need and they ain't give to me. I ain't never doing nothing for them again. That means you gave to the person you never gave to God. You gave with strings attached. Don't ever do that. I don't care how much a person, if I would say pray for those that despitefully use you. It says do good to those. Do good to them. But us, when we don't get it back or somebody, we hold it in our hearts and it only hinders you from receiving. I covered under the blood. No one that has taken money from me by the grace of God I've holding a grudge for or cannot give them back. If they come to me and the Lord lays it upon me, I'll give them with quickness. That's only grace. That's not Duran. That's the grace of God. That's how you remain. Listen to why. Because your blessing don't come from man. It comes from God. And you won't keep this right. Does that make sense? And how do you mess this up? You mess it up and you curse yourself when you start wanting to murder. A lot of people murder people in their hearts. We look at Cain murdering his brother literally. But we murder people in our hearts by cutting them off. You'll never be a part of my life again. And let me tell you something. It's easy to say amen. It's easy to agree. But we do it all the time over money. Lend somebody some money, big money, and they don't pay you back. And then people who you lend money to, how I many of some of them will make, look, look, make get, they'll get more mad at you. Like you borrowed the money. <laughs> they don't want to talk to you, and they was the one who came to you and borrowed the money. And then they get an attitude with you, and they didn't pay you back. <laughs> you never made that person live long enough, it happens. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which thou had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from, the, from, the, from thy hand. Keep going. It's good stuff. Isn't this good stuff? 
Say it with me. And, not, and the Bible says, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. Woo, what a curse. All from started with the wrong heart and the wrong posture. And when he, saw, when he had the heart to say, I'm going to be no weaker to say, like, David did plenty of stuff wrong. But let me tell you what the key to David was. He was, had a repentant heart. Yeah. Only three of y'all. David had a repentant heart. David acknowledged God. Look here. I did some things wrong, but David said in Psalm 51, create in me, not Cain. Cain say, I can hate my brother to the place where I can kill him. He didn't want to fix it. Look at somebody say, fix it. Yeah. Tell somebody say, fix it. And don't curse the person you curse. When you curse in other people and say, but I hope they never met. How many of you know a lot of people try to send curses behind people? They ain't gonna make it. Yeah, they come, they hide now, but I'll watch them fall. Yeah, they drive and hide now, but one day they ain't gonna have nothing they have. How many of you know they word curses? People will try to word curse you when they see you are blessed. Let me show you the danger of that. The danger of that is when they curse you, what are they doing? They cursing themselves. So that's why whoever I'm talking to and is in the room, you want to be careful who you wish evil on. You want to be careful who you wish harm on because when you do that, it's bringing curses on yourself. Say, prove it. He killed his own brother and the Bible says the ground that you put your brother in, you will never be able to eat the fruit thereof again. He was cursed. What was it? Cursed from the ground he killed his brother in. He said, your brother's blood cried from the ground. It's calling to me. What has thou done? Tell somebody, stop cursing yourself. And how, what makes you curse yourself? Money. The love of money is the root of all evil. How many of you know money destroyed the best of friendships? I'm right on it. Money destroys marriages. One of the top reasons marriages to separate is because of money. The money ain't there no more. The money ain't flowing. You ain't providing. We start off like this. I didn't sign up for this. And, when you, and let me do one thing. Anybody mind you better hear this. One thing for those who are married and for those who plan to get married and those who are single. One thing a woman wants is her security. I wish I had a woman in here. A woman has to feel safe. And if she feels safe, you have a rough time sleeping. Because when she starts flipping that blanket, and you'll be like, what's wrong? Pillar getting thrown. <laughs> blanket? Give me this blanket. She's upset. And why is she upset? I'm preaching right. Because she doesn't feel secured. And one thing a woman needs, to, a top priority for a woman is to feel safe. I wish I had a woman in here to say amen somewhere, somewhere in the room. Amen. When she ain't feel safe, that comes up with an attitude. Y'all better, you look here. Y'all better thank God for jump. You better thank God for jump. Let's go. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. But if your punishment was greater than you could bear, um, why didn't you take that? before you had brought me an offering. And I corrected you on the offering. I showed you an example of what I require. Because sometimes we may come to church and not know. But then when we see other people in front of us, offerings being received, we got to say something is up with that. Because how come they're offering and they're getting blessed and I'm not? So I may never need to do an examination of them. I got to do an examination of my heart. Does that make sense? The reason why I sprayed the perfume is because God, our offering goes before God as a stench. Odis, Odis has told me this before. This is truth. Odis' eyes is open spiritually, meaning Odis could see into the spiritual realm. Uh, everybody who don't believe me, just see him. I just, just, just take my word. He can see into the spiritual realm. And he sees a lot of things that some of us will not even imagine. One time I remember Odis saying, he saw prayers... This is one of his visions. He said he saw prayers at the altar and he saw angels picking up some prayers and angels leaving some. He said he saw angels picking up, going around and
Mm -hmm. He didn't have the temper. I mean, he literally saw it. To me, that's a scary thing. Because you could come and cry and the motives could be right off. Say, prove it. prove it. When you don't get what you want, you leave church. That means, that means your offering was never for God. Let me say this. Anybody in this room that is single, you do not, that we're about to go a little, I don't matter you, we're going swimming. Never get married for sex. Remember, you got to ask questions. Not yet, Monica. I can give you time. Get married for ministry. The sex is a bonus. That means you want your help meet so y'all could do the work of ministry. You don't want marriage for sex because there gonna be times in marriage, sex ain't gonna be enough. Because you gotta pay light bill, you gotta pay water bill, he can get sick, she can get sick, she can, there, there gonna be things that can torment them from their past. You're gonna have to know how to minister to those things. So there are times that they're gonna be, wanna be touched physically, but they're gonna have to be touched spiritually. So if your motives are wrong, most women in here and men need to hear this. If your mind starts to get more ministry, then God will send you a help meet. If your mind starts to think more ministry, then God will send you a helper for the ministry. But most people don't think marriage for ministry. They think marriage for them. I just left you all. So you're wondering, you're wondering why we go say bye to Suva. I'm shifting to you, we go and dive in. When God gave Adam Eve and Eve Adam, he gave him her as a help meet. They were helpers in the garden. You want more? Okay, let me give you more. When God gave Ruth Boaz, she was in the field. And Boaz was attracted to her because one of the reasons that he was attracted to her is because he, he saw how she handled his field. So when you start thinking ministry, God will send someone to compliment you to do the work of ministry, not for your loneliness. I'm lonely. God, send me somebody. God, look at you. That ain't the offering. We might say some offers are received and some not. So what is your prayer being? And where have you been praying from when you pray for your spouse? Have you praying for being, pray oh, Lord, all y'all gone shut down on me. Have you been praying from a place of loneliness? Or have you been praying for sex? This may be too much for TV. Or have you been praying, praying from a place of, so we could do the work of ministry? Say, prove it. Because when you pray from a place of ministry, who are you thinking about? God. Y'all look out of here. When you pray, when you're thinking from a place of ministry, who are you thinking about? And if you're thinking about God, and God see you want to do, uh, your heart is right to do ministry. And listen to me. You can't wait on him to do ministry. Oh. <laughs> Lord, when you send him or her, we can preach together. God say, get out of here. Start preaching now. Then I'll send him or her. Say, prove it. Adam was already in the garden, tilling the ground, naming the animals. Then God sent Eve. Ruth was already in the field. Then Boaz met her in the field. That's why you don't come to church and just sit down. You want to do the work of ministry so God will send you a help me. And then you want to do a work of ministry with the right heart because you could do the work of ministry with the wrong heart. I'm going to do this so he could see me. <laughs> Am I making sense? When I dance, when I sing, when I rap, he will see me. Am I making sense? So you could do it for wrong reasons. <laughs> You don't want to do it for him to see you. You want to do it for God to see you. And then God will open his eyes to see you. Am I helping you all? Yeah. Who am I helping? Clap your hand if I'm helping anybody. Clap your hand if I'm helping. Clap your hand if I'm helping. Clap your hand if I'm helping. Listen. Fabio, this is true. This is true. When I was preaching one day, preaching up a storm, I was always preaching. I was doing the work of ministry. I was preaching down the aisle, down the aisle, and Lady Hepburn was in the back, sitting on the right. I was preaching down the aisle. I was doing the work of ministry. Am I making sense? 
You got to be doing ministry for him. So you praying for a man or you praying for a woman, the first thing you're doing wrong is you're not doing the work of ministry. And then what you got to examine is, I don't want to do the work of ministry so he could see me. I want to do the work of ministry so it could be acceptable to the Lord. And then the Lord will bring somebody alongside of me when I do the work of ministry. So good. Somebody say, so good. Say, so good. You got to be in place, man, for God to bless you. Ruth had to be in the field. If she wasn't in the field, she'd never meet Boaz. She didn't stay. Say, prove it. She told Naomi, stay home. She was in Naomi's land, you know. She told Naomi, stay home, and I will go and... This is so good, y'all. You know, you know what I'm thinking right now? I wish I had someone to teach me this. <laughs> so I'm thinking, like, my God. She started to stay home. Naomi went into the field, and she told Naomi, stay home. Naomi told her, see, Ruth told Naomi, stay home. I'm going into the field to glean in the field. She, while she told her mother-in-law, stay home, she went and gleaned. And I'm going to know she got blessed. If Naomi became rich, guess what, if Ruth became rich, guess what Naomi say? If you got it, I got it too. Because you in my hometown, home girl, <laughs> you'll get that later. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Keep going. Good stuff. Go, plumber, go, plumber, go, go, go. Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a, and I shall be a, all because of his offering. I want to say this. This is truth again. I know y'all ain't ready for it. Y'all, you can tell the story, but you really got to hear it. I had nothing when the young man with the money blessed me. Nothing. I had no car, no house. Anybody that know that to be true? One person that know it to be true, come. One person that know it to be true. Could, could almost think you almost beat her. I had nothing. Somebody say nothing. No car, no house. The, I mean, the house was really like no house. No AC inside. No, it was colder inside than outside. No installation. The young man gave me almost fifty thousand dollars. A pastor who had everything, and I, my pastor, I'm telling you all the truth, I know you all may not believe it. Who had everything? He had his TV seven times a day. He was had a van, had cameras. Had everything. He called me and said to me, I got a need. I'm thinking, I got a need too. As you could see, I got a big need. He had a big house, big team, ministry prospering. He said, can I borrow? And I had nothing, and I gave it. When I gave it to him, you know what God said to me? God, thank you, I'm glad you said that. You know what he said to me? He said, that was not your seed to eat. It was your seed to sow. Now I got, I got my own channel now. Oh, you all missed that. If I had become bitter, I would never have my own channel. Because I would have made the need about him. Remember, oh, some of y'all hanging your head. I, really, I would have made it about him and not, not God. But God taught me, Sheila, that the seed that I had was not for me to eat. It was for me to sow. And you know what? I want you to let's talk. So glad you're here. Who wants to talk? I, what could have happened, Latanya, is I, he could, I could have said, he could have said, I'm taking advantage of this little boy. I'm taking advantage of this preacher. He don't know. I'm taking advantage of him. And if he was or if not, it really didn't matter because God is still in control. Now, today, I have my own television channel because I kept my posture right. And then God taught me, matter of perspective, the seed was not meant for you to eat. It was meant for you to sow. So I was sowing into where I am now with my own cameras. I got two, these cameras tonight, y'all. Don't clap yet. I got three state-of-the-art cameras. Come here, Shadrach. I hope he's here. Sometimes, sometimes, Shadrach, time going. Come here, Shadrach. Give him a mic, somebody. Or come with a mic. Come if you come a little faster. I have three state-of-the-art. Y'all want to hear some, oh, I'll see you some more. The, the same pastor. When I came, he brought me a big soundboard. What he brought me? He said, this soundboard is for you. Say, tell us some more. The soundboard never worked. This was the same one I gave the over 25,000 plus two. It never worked. Shadow, what kind of cameras are these? Um, top of the line. What kind? Top of the line. So when we do these, what, 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 what does it put at our TV in when we do the cameras on TV? What speed or what word am I looking for? 
Um, <laughs> it just gives us a more appealing aesthetic look. More appealing aesthetic look. Yes. So it brings us, when we're on television now, what type of cameras we had in the past? We had, well, well, we had um, HD cameras. Ah, These that's are, the word I'm looking okay. at. Come on now. <laughs> See, now it's clicking in. The preacher's coming. Go ahead. We had HD cameras. Now we have 4.6K. 4 point, ooh, that even sound good. <laughs> we gone from HD to 4.6K. All from a seed that I didn't get offended over. All from a seed I gave to God. Very good, Monica. See, it's easy for you to give when you have it. But when can you, can you give God your best when you don't have it? It was a, ima, very good. So it also teaches you God honors a sacrifice. We're not, see, what you all have to get is, you're not giving to me. You're giving to the Lord. And whether I, you, I could, give me this money. You're like, I can't believe Bishop even tell me thank you. You don't even worry about that. What you worried about is that you gave it with the right heart and God receives it. Guess where, that sounds like hallelujah, Monica, that sounds, guess where most people get stuck? I can't believe you didn't tell me thank you. I can't believe it. I can't believe you didn't pay my rent. I can't believe you didn't pay my car bill. That's where most people say stuck because they never gave it to God. So most people can cross into the realm of blessings because they never honored God with their offering. They gave God second best. When God requires the best. Offering is important to God. And the heart in which we give it, open every ear in this room, is important to God. How we treat, you know, let me say this. I want everybody just to think about this. Do what? I'm coming for you now. I'm coming for you all. So think about it. Do what? I'm coming for you. So really think about this. How many people in this room, take your time, has asked me how my mother was doing? And know she was sick. And I told you she fell out. Take your time. You must give God your best. Because you've never seen him. Take your time. What's the thing? Bishop, how's your mother? More than that, how are you doing, Bishop, with your mother? But you go to God, Lord, I love you. You cannot treat God who you've never seen and don't honor his priest. And not even just me. Joey, how's your mom? Deep stuff up. Make you think. Ooh. 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 Let's close our eyes. Just food for thought. Offering motives. Shazam. <laughs> Did I give you food for thought? Oh, yeah. I know. Close your eyes. Thank you, Shadra. Oh. Father, somebody say, Lord, Lord. help me help. to give you my best. You my best. That's why he gives us pastors, y'all. That's why he gives us first ladies. Father, creating us. Somebody say, Lord. Creating me a clean heart. Who are you going to be? you going to be Abel or Cain? You can hold a fence. You can stop preaching. I can stop preaching. Stop going to church. You got to do it unto the Lord. Who you do it unto? You do it unto the Lord. Who you do it unto? Very good, Monica, you got it. Say, God, I repent for not bringing you. Mean it, mean it, mean it, because he's watching my best. Now listen, Keen had a chance to repent. Did he repent? Father, you <laughs> did he repent? What he did? He made excuses. But let somebody do wrong in the church. You're quick to talk about it. 
You're quick to bring it up. You're quick to gossip about it. It's amazing. We are, how many of you know we're a trip? Only one person. How many? Of you, I know. A couple laughs. Father, tonight, make us better. Mean it, mean it, mean it, mean it. Don't curse yourself. Don't curse yourself. Don't do what? Don't curse yourself. More than cursing yourself is don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Don't do what? Don't make excuses. Father, we cover this service under the blood of Jesus. Help us to see the importance of offering and that you value offering. You value more than just what we give, but the attitude in which we give it with. Tonight, y'all, I gave you all true examples. Those men that I told you about, I called Pastor Elliot because she was there. She knows the story. There are other people that could have come here and see Denise trying to run. There are more people that could have run up here and say, he's telling you the truth. Father, we thank you tonight that it's the truth that's going to make us free. Somebody say the truth. How many of you want the truth? If you want the truth, stand on your feet today. Look at, look at Nasir. It's a smart boy. That boy, 20, but he's smart. Y'all don't sleep on Nasir. Nasir, y'all can sleep on him as much as y'all want. That little one behind that camera is a smart young man. I scared of him. He's smart. They can sleep on him if they want, but that young one, that street smart behind that camera. Most of us in this room are street smart. We could be dressed up smart, but we smart. <laughs> Say, man, <laughs> is that too tough? If you hear me tonight, take a step forward. Who wants to get better in the room? Who wants God to accept their offering? I do. I do. Some of y'all raise one hand. I think you should try two hands. Who wants God to accept their offering? You got to get, Lord, that's all of me. God, accept my offering. Don't let my offering not be accepted listen y'all I've been praying for many years many years and I don't take coming to prayer for granted I I don't I want you to hear me I don't ever come with the assumption God hearing my prayer yeah I'm in there I always ask God I always say God please hear me please hear me because sometimes we sin and don't even recognize it I'm not about the things you do and you recognize and he doesn't have to hear you a king don't have to let you in his kingdom I'm going to let you in my house. I choose to let you in. So I always say, God created me. And God hear my cry. I don't ever assume he hears me. I just got it like that. I'd be like, God, hear my cry. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, I say, God, lead me to the rock. Hear my cry, oh God. Because I know Deron, I noticed what I said. I didn't say Bishop, I didn't say Dr. Epperin. I know Deron sometimes don't deserve him hearing his prayer. Because I don't always do what's right. I don't always think what's right. So I say, God, with your mercy and your grace, hear me. I know y'all always do what's right. I know you always think what's right, but Deron don't always do it. So I say, God, please hear my cry. And if he hears me, I say, Lord, thank you for hearing me. If he moves on my behalf, thank you for moving. Because he doesn't have to hear me. Oh. Father, tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, hear my cry. Say it in meaning. Say, attend unto my prayer. Say, from the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. Say, when my heart is overwhelmed, Say, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Say, in the name of Jesus. When you come to, you got to come in the name of Jesus. I might as well tell you, don't come in your name because ain't nothing to you. Come in the name of Jesus.
Bible says no one could come to the Father except they come through the Son. You better come in the name of Jesus. And don't let nobody tell you they came another way. You got to come through Jesus. Who you got to come through? He's the door. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one could come to the Father except they come through me. No one, unless I read that wrong, he said, no one could come to the Father except they come through me. No one, somebody say, no one. Eyes closed, say, no one can come to the Father except they come through Jesus. That's the power of your. God wants the best. He wants the best of your offering. He wants the best of you. He wants the best of you. Does he deserve our best? Now take your time. Well, I'm asking that from the back row to the front row. Does God deserve our best? Listen, if you doubt that for one second, you need to wake up. God sent the best for us. God sent Jesus, which was his very best. He said, I'll send my only son to die when we think of that, we understand how bad we are, how poor we are. He sent the best and we don't want to give him our best. What a shame. He sent the best for us and then we don't want to give him our best. What a shame. What a shame. And he's, let me show you, he's so powerful in love. He's so awesome in love. Is he knew we won't give him our best and he still sent the best. See how he didn't hold a grudge? <laughs> See how he didn't, hold, oh, he didn't hold it against us? He knew we would next give him our best and he still sent him. Would a God. Oh, you all ain't hear that? I feel like three people are hearing me tonight. I said, would a God. He knew we wouldn't give him our best and still sent him. Would love with love no strings attached I love you even if you don't love me I'll ask you about your family even if you don't ask about mine I'll check on your injuries even if you don't check on mine I'll ask you about your sister your mother and your brother when you don't even ask me about mine with love love is not what you say Love is what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's okay to cry, baby. It's okay to cry. Cry all the time. I need to cry some more. Father, tonight we cover this room under the blood. Holy Spirit, make us better. Make all of us better. The pulpit better too. I could, listen, y'all, I got room to get better. If I ever tell you I ain't got room to get better, you run for the door because then that means I depend on my strength. I got room to get better. But let's get better. Let's not just say there's room and let's do it. Let's go on this three-day fast and let the Lord make us better. Let me say something about this fast too. Ask him to accept it. I've already started that. I don't feel like if I just turn the plate down and fast, it automatically is done. Ask God to receive the fast. I tell this is me, y'all. I'm trying to let y'all into the run a little bit. I don't ever fast and just think, oh, I'm fasting, God can accept it. I say, Lord, please let our fast be acceptable. I've, I haven't even started fasting yet, and that's been my heartbeat. That's been my prayer. Lord, honor our fast. Because you let me say this, you can also fast for wrong motives. So my prayers from, and we haven't started yet tomorrow. I said, Lord, honor our fast. Because I will know once he honors it, we're straight. It's a done deal. We become like able. It's acceptable. Mm. Am I helping one person? Uh, am I helping one person? I done my job. Am I helping one person? Yeah, yeah. Always ask him because he don't have to take it. Not every play turned turn down is acceptable. He said, this is the fast that I have chosen. So that means that there, there has to be a fast that he has not chosen. 
Muslim fast sometimes. Every month I think there's a certain time that they fast. Some months they fast, all they do is fast. Every fast is not acceptable. You could fast out of religion and not out of relationship. Ah, good stuff, huh? Somebody say good stuff. Touch somebody real quick, say good stuff. Touch somebody else real quick, say good stuff. Let's get ready to give our best, our best, see there, our best, our best, Miss Carolyn. Let's ready to give our best to the Lord. That's why to Rome when you cook, you cook your best. That's why when you make them solid, you do your best. When you do detailing, Tisha and JB, you do your best. You don't cook rice half done and say it's your best. You don't cook chicken red with the meat showing and say it's your best. As the, re the meat is more like you just took it out of the refrigerator. God could not eat it. And you want me to eat it? <laughs> Maurice, Maurice, so good to love her. You love her, boy. It's just good. You love her. That's a, the reflection of God's love. That's why he gave man to woman. It resembles God's love for man. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Nothing wrong with it. God will put in our hearts a love for people. 